Any update on Alexis? Uh, we're going to see how he goes today. Uh, was pretty good yesterday. Uh, still day to day, but making great improvements. Really making good improvements. So um, we'll go today and see how he does, and then see how he responds tomorrow. How has he been not being able to play? It's got to be tough. Uh, he's chomping at the bit. You know what I mean? And uh, you know the the most important thing is when we bring him back, he's ready to go. You know, and, and again, as I said after the game, uh, that's on our medical staff. They're the ones that make that decision with, with Alexis in terms of how he feels. And at this point, you know, they got to trust a little bit what he's telling them as well. So we'll put him through some stuff and see how he responds today, how he looks out there. And then really the big thing is how he feels tomorrow morning uh, heading into our shoot around in the game. What do you think of the other guys, the other young guys stepping up in his place the past two games, doing some really good things? Yeah, you know, obviously very pleased with, you know, those guys seizing that opportunity. You know, one of the things we talked about in the beginning of the year, how important our depth was going to be. Um, and I think David talked about it in the last game. You know, we have three or four guys that can carry the load offensively at times for us. Uh, but, you know, your depth comes into play on the defensive end, on rebounding, uh, when guys are out you know, with an injury, uh, someone's got to, you know, be able to step up. And it's not just one guy, it's everybody collectively doing a little bit more. And I think that's been the greatest response uh, from our team is everybody's doing a little bit more. Everybody's rebounding a little bit more. Uh, maybe the defensive intensity is a little bit higher and maybe a greater awareness uh, of what we need to get done. Because, you know, you can say what you want. I mean, he's our lead, and Alexis is our leading rebounder and third leading scorer. Uh, and has done a great job of scoring around the basket for us and can stretch the defense now with being able to make some threes. So we've had to make a few adjustments, but our guys have responded well. It's been about improvement and winning the games, but now you can actually get to the part of the season where, oh, you look at the standings, and these games can keep moving you up. Do you talk to the guys about that, or do you think they kind of know what's up? Well, I mean, I, obviously in this day and age, there's an awareness of what's going on, you know, in a bigger picture outside of our, you know, two-day preparation for games. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things this team has been great at is staying focused on the task at hand. And I think that's one of the reasons we've gotten better. You know, uh, we haven't looked ahead and said, okay, in this next four game stretch or in the, we just taking it game by game. This is the most important game that we play all year long because it's the only game that we play on Wednesday night. And our guys have done a great job of that. Uh, even with the new guys, even with the lack of experience in terms of being a cohesive unit, they've really bought into that. And the leadership has been the ones who have been driving that. Coach, uh, two questions about the ECU game. Late in the game, it looked like uh, LaQuincy uh, landed awkwardly. How, how is he? And what was the call when uh, that kid fouled uh, Mayon with his nose? Was it a cylinder call? Yeah, so, um, you know, at this point of the year, you're in February. Everybody's banged up a little bit. You know, even with our depth, our guys have logged significant minutes. So, you know, as a coach, you, you, uh, you got to make sure that, you know, practices are still sharp, but you're staying fresh, uh, fresh bodies, fresh minds. Uh, and then the guys have to, as I talked about at the end of the last game, our guys have to take ownership in that as well, getting into extra rehab and the uh, recovery stuff, all the amenities that they have here. Um, so, you know, Q was a little banged up after that game, but uh, he, he's fine. Uh, with the foul, it was a cylinder foul. Um, you know, we had one of those in the SMU game. They originally called the foul on the defense uh, or on, on the offense when David was guarding the ball. He got hit. Uh, but he was in, when they reviewed it, he was in the cylinder. So they take the foul off the offense and give the ball back to them. Um, I wasn't so happy on the, the SMU call, but I was really happy in the ECU call. Speak a little on UCF, a couple of spectacular guards you guys going to have to probably bring it in the beginning against them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, pick to win the league, um, preseason player of the year in Taylor. Um, you know, a team that last year was an NCAA tournament caliber team, no question about it. Just besieged with injuries, and it derailed their, their season. Um, so they, they, they've come back with a little bit of that feeling still 
you know, in their heart and in their mind, and they've played extremely well. Um, with the, the big fella inside, he causes a lot of matchup situations that you're just not accustomed to. Um, and as good as he is, those other guys have played very well. Colin Smith has had a great redshirt sophomore year, um, obviously with Taylor, you know, what a premier guard in our league, a redshirt senior. They, they are very experienced. You know, they're either a senior or a junior or whatever class they're in, they're a redshirt in that class. So add another year of experience, another year of development and practice, another year of physical maturity. So they are a physically mature, very disciplined team. They're great defensively. They can really score on offense. And then you add Coach Dawkins' his son to it, who's an elite scorer. You know, he was a great player in the Big Ten, you know. Um, and so, you know, they, they got all the, all the bases covered, and you just got to make sure defensively we're going to be really, really challenged and we got to do a great job on the glass. Speaking of the big fella, how do you prepare your players for that? None of them have gone up against him. You've known him since he was like a sophomore in high school. Right. And, and until you're next to him, you don't realize how big a human being he is and you can't replicate that in practice. No, you, you can't. And you, you know, you just, uh, you go about your preparation and you talk about it and then the guys go out there and they got to get the job done. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing you can do to prepare for it um, other than, you know, show them the film and talk about it and try to work on some different actions in, uh, in their offensive schemes uh, and how we're going to guard it. Uh, but until you get hit in the chops with that elbow, uh, which is, you know, his elbows are at our head. You know what I mean? And it's just the reality of it, you know? And, and the one thing is, you know, he's, 300 plus pounds too. So uh, you can't push them around either. So you just, you gotta go out there and, and uh, uh, you know there's gonna be some times where there's not much you can do, you know, and then you just gotta move on to the next play. Coach, you've seen plenty of rivalries coaching other conferences. How does this one compare to USF, UCF? Well, it's at the infant stages for us right now because we haven't been very competitive on, the, on our rivalry side and, and we need to pick that up you know, to make this thing, uh, you know, something special. And it, it's an important game for us. I know it's an important game for them. And, we, you know, you look at the football where, where it's been the last few years, and it's been tremendous. That game is, uh, you know, great to be at, great excitement. And it's kind of created a national brand. And it's, as I said, it's great for both universities and it's great for our conference. Um, you know, I think our, th this basketball rivalry is going to get there because I have, out of anybody in the profession, there's no one I respect more than Johnny Dawkins and what he's all about and how he builds programs and the type of guys he has and the way he does his business. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be two really good programs that are going to bang heads on the recruiting trail and then twice a year, maybe three times a year. I know we still have plenty of season to go, but I feel like every press release or every story that I see on this basketball team, there's always some kind of skid that's been broken or snapped. Uh, do you ever step back and think, wow, I mean, from year one to year two, we've definitely made improvements. I mean, I know there's still plenty of season to go and there's still plenty of left to attain at some point, but do you ever step back and go, wow? Yeah, I, I think you have to, because if you don't enjoy it, then, you know, what are you doing it for? Um, but it's a short period of enjoyment and then you move on, you know, because uh, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of basketball left. You know, I, I talked about it last night. Yeah, this is a big game and all that. But there's we, we still got seven league games left. One other game, the conference tournament, hopefully the postseason. So there's a lot of basketball left to be played. And I think, as I said, I'm excited because we keep getting better. So I'm excited to see how good we can get by the end of the year. Um, but if you're, if you're not taking pride in, in these initial steps in the program that we want to build, uh, then you're, you're missing out. And uh, I'll probably enjoy it a lot more in May, but uh, I know everybody's in, a, in our program is proud of where we're at, but not satisfied, which I think is a good feeling. Great. All good? Thank you.